we've come to chapter 8 now. And chapter 8 then is a teaching on the way in which the ultimate nature, that is emptiness, should be shown to students. The way in which it should be shown or taught, revealed to students. And this chapter can be thoroughly called thoroughly preparing the student, or also it could be referred to as the manner in which emptiness is shown to students. But basically how we prepare and train our mind to receive these uh, teachings, the way in which this process is uh, best brought about. And the chapter can be divided into three major sections. The first section is the teaching on the faults of lacking interest in the definitive meaning. That is then pointing out the flaws of uh, our lack of fully wanting to engage in the definitive or ultimate meaning of emptiness as it is. Uh, the flaws of having a lack of enthusiasm or interest and even respect for the teaching. The second section is a teaching on practicing the gradual stages of uh, provisional and definitive meaning. That is then the way in which we first rely on the provisional teachings and then the ultimate teachings in the gradual process of uh, pursuing liberation or freedom. The way in which we engage step by step in the provisional and ultimate meaning and the trainings therein. The third section is the teachings on the benefits and qualities of the definitive meaning. Then the beneficial effects and the qualities and whatnot that come from realizing the true nature of phenomena. And we begin with the first section, the first uh, section of this chapter, the teaching on the faults when there is a lack of interest in the definitive or ultimate meaning. Beginning with that question then, is uh, it possible to realize emptiness <coughs> or not? Is it possible to free ourselves from disturbing emotions to eliminate, the, eliminate them in their entirety or not. And the answer is that we most definitely, we can infallibly eliminate the disturbing emotions. And we can absolutely, infallibly realize the true nature of all phenomena. And so the, the teaching uh, begins and goes through a gradual process of pointing this out to us. Beginning with uh, examining the disturbing emotions as they arise in reaction to an object. Yesterday we spoke about these afflictive disturbing emotions and how we have habituated ourselves to them since beginning this time up until this point. But despite this long standing habit, still are these disturbing emotions adventitious or adventitious? Yes. Are they such that we can be free from them? Yes. That is because they are not the inherent nature of mind. The inherent nature, the nature of mind is timelessly enlightened. When we look at Gyutakna Sena, Gyutakna Sena, Gyutakna Sena, Gyutakna Sena, Gyutakna Sena, Gyutakna what is it? Kidoji. Oh, Hevasha Tantra. Thank you. In the Hevasha Tantra, it says sentient beings are timelessly enlightened, but 
they are obscured by temporary or adventitious obscurations. So we are innately Buddhas, but we are obscured by adventitious, so sudden and impermanent obscurations. Our nature as sentient beings is timelessly pure, is timelessly enlightened. That is our Buddha nature. But due to temporary and adventitious obscurations or stains, we don't recognize this innate nature. And because these stains are adventitious, they are such that uh, we can be freed from them. We can eliminate them. And that is that they have not, they are not the nature of mind itself. If they were the nature of mind, we could never be freed from them. There would be no talk about being able to free ourselves from them whatsoever. But they are not a permanent situation in that they're not the nature of mind. And so beginning this uh, discussion then with chapter 176, it says, Just as friendship between people who disagree does not last long, desire does not last long when all things, faults, are recognized. All things, faults, are recognized. Um, this is an example using the disturbing emotion of desire. And uh, it is a way in which we can discard or eliminate the disturbing emotions by examining the objects that give rise to them, the objects that we react to with disturbing emotions. And that is that by knowing the inherent flaws of the objects, then that subsequently eliminates the disturbing emotion that reacts to them as such. And the example that's given here is that of desire, and particularly because it is an emotion that we have the most difficult time freeing ourselves of. And so it's given here as the primary emphasis of uh, all the disturbing emotions. And the first one is pointing out to us how we can have desire towards someone. It says, just as a friendship between people who disagree does not last long at first, then we have a desire towards someone. We have an attachment toward them. But eventually we begin to disagree or have a disharmony. And in not getting along, uh, that feeling of love or desire for them doesn't last. It doesn't stay. It has no staying power. Basically, it changes because it is the nature of change. Desire changes. It doesn't last. Like that, then toward any desirable object, then that desire toward an object does not always last. It, we might start out with it thinking the object is attractive and so forth, and later then we see some kind of flaw or pitfall in it and the desire changes. The attachment goes away. So too then, if we were to know the flaws of all desirable objects, forms, sounds, tastes, sense, tactile sensations, and so forth, in that way, the desire <coughs> toward them, the attachment for them, would not stay. It would change. And so we have something, we start out with something that we're attached to, that we have desire for. But then, as soon as we see some kind of flaw there, then we basically abandon, we let go of that desire toward it, or toward them. We might feel like we have love for someone at first, but then it doesn't last, it changes. And that change comes about because we start to see some kind of flaw in the object of that attachment, of that desire, and so it doesn't stay. In this way, if we were to see the flaws inherent within all desirable objects, then the desire would not stay. It would not last towards form, sounds, tastes, scents, tactile sensations, and so forth. It would not be a lasting circumstance. It changes. Also.